automatically, when a kid walks into a probation officer, he automatically assumes the kid takes narcotics, the kid's got BD, the kid's no good, he's dirty, he's lazy, he don't want to work, he's a criminal. Automatically, just because he's a Chicano. A policeman sees him and say, gets the same impression. They stop him, they rouse him, they don't do that to Anglo kids. But they do that to Chicano kids. They're bad. Chicanos, the white man ain't gonna change it for us, and the black man ain't gonna change it for us. We have to do it. We started out to make a film about a young Chicano living in an urban ghetto. Before we had finished, we had generated discussion in the community that went far beyond the film itself. You really have to do something now. Anything is better than just sitting back and saying, well, don't do this, don't do that, because the police is gonna get you, and all the time the police is getting you. You know, I had, I had your brown beret on. I went down there. They started talking about the brown beret as soon as I got in. So that's one thing I can't get out of you guys. You won't tell me what you guys do. Cool, I don't want to tell you nothing. And then he, started, he kept jumping on my case. And then after that, he got right into a... Into white the guy who was one of the first kids that came to the center. He got mad. And it's, it was to the point he got in so involved with the center that he didn't want to go to school. Just don't bother me. I told him that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he must have got his cookies. <laughs> and like with, with Guy's case, it was a thing where we were more friends than we were anything else. As a counselor, they think this is very important. It was an open thing where you could come in, you wanted to sit down and rap. Whoever you wanted to rap to, fine. What was that book they gave you? They gave you a book to read, didn't they? Yeah. Huh? They said read it. What did they tell you? They give you a book, set you down, and said go to work, huh? They told Danny now. Uh, here's a book. You do half halfways, we'll give you five credits. So you do the whole thing, you get ten. They didn't explain nothing to them. Just do it. Yeah, but that's what I mean. They're treating you like your little kid. Whether should live. Finger, is that what it says? Finger tray, still, dock, clip, lay, stuck. Bunk. That's it. Bunk is off. Abuse, red, no. Abuse. Yes. No, take time. Abuse. Okay, I don't know that word. Okay, try next. I don't know that word. What that means is that uh, you can read, but you don't do a lot of reading. Scramble, okay? Well, up until he got into the seventh grade, everything was okay. He had no problem. But uh, after seventh grade, he started having problems. Father always admitted from time he was so small that he just couldn't talk to him. And uh, everything the guy did made him angry. Um, when he was small, if he'd fall down, he'd pick him up and spank him, you know. And that's the way it started. And as he grew older and he started getting into little things at school, he would, uh, of course, always punish him and he would be real severe in his punishment. So anyway, man, I got her and I kissed her and I played the park, you know. I took her back when, right when we got in front of all the people, then she made her. She threw her tantrum, man. Started screaming and wanted to throw me chingados. <laughs> you know, I used to get in front of all the people for you would have hit her. Well, he couldn't take anybody telling him what to do. 
and he especially couldn't take a man telling him what to do. I think that it has to do with the fact that his dad and I are divorced. Mom, last time he was wearing it, that's what he did to him. Mm -hmm. Burn on his shoe. He's a liar. You did that to him, because when I got him back, I, I thought it was dirty. I was trying to take it off and you went to mom. Liar, I didn't do nothing. It looks like those old shoes were the black and white. The great. You're a liar, guy. Wow. Well, he, he went to a couple of other schools and they would kick him out because he, he was like real rowdy with everybody, you know. He didn't get along with anybody. And then two years ago, he went to Montebello and he started blasting weed and dropping reds and whites. How long has you been out of school? Two and a half months. And then you were out, and you've been out for two and a half months and they just now let you back in a continuation. That ought to tell you something. That ought to tell you how the system is, number one. Now that he's back in that school, he thought he'd be in jail within a couple of weeks. Exactly. There's, there's more narcotics at that school than there is anywhere else. We don't want anybody loaded on campus. You know, that just, you know, that just destroys it all. <laughs> so, okay, so you come, you know, you come someday and, you know, you, you happen to be a little late. So what happens? Probably the best thing to do is come over to me. And so <coughs> that I don't have to bust you. If the principal or you know one of the teachers sees somebody loaded on campus, um, the principal is probably going to call a man. We talked about, you know, over there, just kind of touched on it, that they don't want you at the other schools, right? Yeah. Well, Mr. White, I saw you at Keppel yesterday, I guess. I was, I was there, and somebody threw a cherry bomb at me, so I threw a trash can at the car. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he, uh, I didn't talk to him, but I guess he was kind of, uh... We started a riot. <laughs> yeah. They don't want you. The system rejected him. He couldn't really go to school because he didn't feel confident to go to school. So instead of just saying, okay, well, you know, I'm going to be a loner and do my thing the best way I can, he looked for that, that lean, that help. Uh, you going to be with any of tonight? Some brother named Lorraine. Hey, you're my son. Garbage Hill. What's some garbage name Lorraine? Ah, that's my girl. Is that yours? My girl. It is, man. I ain't seen you had your hands on her yet. Well, you haven't seen in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was easy. Because I'm with him in the dark. What about that girl Martha you went to see? Martha? That's his name. Oh, that's right. Uh, excuse me for the... the switch off. <laughs> you didn't take turns, man. <laughs> <laughs> Here they go. I mean, uh, you know, we all dig on Chicano Park. We don't like to fuck over our own Rasa and all that. But right. it, it's all got to be a mutual understanding, man, you know? Say, like, if they come down the corner right now and a couple carloads and they jump one of our homies, of course we got to go jump for him, man, see? But if they wouldn't do that, man, and we get together, man, and go down there and dust some pigs, man, it'd be different things, see? Like we've been doing. Right? Throw a party today. Right now, however, right now. Let's go to get some wine. Let's go to the dollar. Would you give me a gallon of fun? Get some wine, too. I gave you a spanel. Spanel. Hey, Nico Bell. Hey, Brad. I come home and I, I see him kind of like passed out, you know, and uh, I try to talk to him and he wouldn't make any sense. He, his speech would be all slurred. I started asking around and they told me that uh, he was taking drugs. Most of the guys are dealing with here, like in any other community, the fact that uh, they've been lied to so many years behind the use of marijuana. They've been lied to and lied to so that when they do try it and they find out that it's not as harmful <laughs> to them as if they've been all this brainwashing and conditioning, then when somebody brings along and introduces red, then they say, well, I'm going to try it, marijuana. They said it was bad. It wasn't. They try red. Uh -huh. <laughs>
Hey, what's your answer to the door, Ralph? 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 Ooh, that's good because you don't fuck up you start crunching out over there about to was there. Yeah. But you no, know, I feel high a little bit like that. No. But I need a couple more reds to make me feel better. Yeah, because you know, once you get a little teaser, man, you know, just like the pussy, man, you can make it with the bread, but you you want a jugger after. Yeah. <laughs> but in guys' case especially in that, like many times when he was loaded on reds. I'd say to him, man, like, are you sure I love it? And he'd say to me, no, I'm not. And I think that in his mind, he really believed that. In his, his mind, psychologically, he really believed that he wasn't. His mind was functioning to the point that he could control his, the function of his mind, but he couldn't control the functioning of his body. You're a bitch right there and drop me. He goes to see his P.O. the other day, and his P.O. tells him, well, I think we're going to have to prosecute you on this. I guess you know you're going to end up in camp. So now he's got the attitude that, well, you know, the hell with it. Why should I do anything? I'm going to camp anyway. See? And that's what they want him to think. That's what they, that's what they want. I kept telling him that over and over again. He wanted to get sent away, unconsciously. You know, with, with Chicanos, you know, it, it's a thing that if you haven't been to Campo, if you haven't been in a locked up situation, you know what's happening. You don't belong. It, it's like a, a status symbolism, right? It's, it's like an image, man. I went to camp and look at me, man. I'm big and bad. Don't mess with me. And I think that this is one of the trips that he was going on. Your big brother goes, your cousin goes, everybody goes, everybody goes to jail. I, you know, I think that has a lot to do with why uh, they have such a bad, bad stereotype of the man, you know, the police. They've seen them in action, you know, at their best. If it wasn't beating their uncle or their father, they'd rather they beat somebody across the street. So then we came out the, the same way we came in, but then we seen a cop car out there. I mean, he was stopping somebody, so, you know, out of curiosity, we went to go see. We stopped in front of here, because it was raining. And we were looking at him, and they got him salty, and he said that we were pinning him down, we were acting suspicious, you know, sneaking around buildings, you know. He was sniveling, you know, talking about how, how, how cold we were. So uh, he came and brought his squad with him, you know, detectives and all that, made a big scene. And he's talking about he's new in the neighborhood. I told him, you shouldn't say nothing to you. If you don't know how we walk, so you might as well learn to breathe. Do it. He goes, don't worry, I'm going to get you sooner or later. You need a spray. No, I don't want it. You need a spray. Shut up. Acrylic. You could spray it onto a rag and then like inhale it from your mouth. Then don't put you really on the same trip with the rest. It has something in it to make you see things that you don't originally see. Oh, what is in my bag? Oh, my, my bag. Huh? You put, you put it in, in your sister's bedroom, I think. My sister's bedroom? No. He said to me once, you know, you're really my friend. And I said to him, I said, don't bet on it. But I didn't really hear him. I merely heard some words, man, that meant nothing. But when I thought about it later, he was trying to tell me something. Man. He was really trying to sure. reach out, something that he'd never done before. He was trying to reach out and say, hey, you know, somebody help me, just help me, guide me. Somebody do something, man, to show me the way. Because, you know, 
I'm tired of looking at you. I'm tired of really searching you. Because everybody tells me I'm wrong. Can't I be right, you know, sometimes? Our shooting kind of ended abruptly as of last Saturday. And uh, could you tell us what happened? Well, a guy was uh, picked up and uh, taken to Juvenile Hall. Um, well, I don't know if I should... Uh, should I say the charge? That's up to you. Well, he was picked up on a charge of kidnap and rape. But it isn't true. He was home and in bed when this was supposed to have happened. And uh, they're detaining him because of the fact that the uh, probation officer feels that he's been too much of a problem. And if, if they send him to count for that, then it's going to be wrong. And he, he'll, he'll have, like, it's not going to be right to him. So he'll try something, like to probably escape or something. Because it's not that right to him. Because he didn't do nothing in it. I believe in these people. I believe in those little chicanitos that are coming up. I'm not concerned with myself. It involves all of us, man. It's deeper than what it, it appears to be. You think I like it when I see these kids coming in here loaded in their heads on red? You think I like it? When they fall over and bump their head and it might accidentally kill one? You think I like it when they trip down the street because there's nothing for them to do because this society has made us be this way? They start at 12. By the time they're 17 years old, man, it's become a way of life. 